friendship so sweet there's not a thrill that can't compete with the thrill i feel whenever god's children meet you feel that way oh i love the thrill that i feel when i get together with god's wonderful people i love the thrill that i feel when i get together with god's wonderful again it can be just anywhere it can be just anywhere two or three are gathered there that the spirit of the lord will be there too there's no fellowship so sweet there's not a thrill that can compete with the thrill i feel whenever god's God's wonderful people, what a sight, just pieces. When I look around and see the good things he does for me, I know I'm unworthy of them all. For his blessings he freely gives, I owe my life to him i've got so much to thank him for yeah and i've got so much to thank him for so much to praise him for you see he has been so good to me and when I think of what he's done and where he has brought me from, I've got so much to thank him for. When I look around and see the good things he does, I know 
I'm unworthy of them all For His blessings He freely gives I owe my life to Him I've got so much to thank Him for yes. And I've got so much to thank Him for So much to praise Him for You see, He has been so good to me of what he's done and where he has brought me from i've got so much to thank him for sometimes while along my way i kneel to stop and say thank you lord for all you've done One day I'll reach sweet heaven's show. Oh, please let me kneel once more. I've got so much to thank Him for. And I've got so much to thank Him for. So much to praise Him for. Has been so good to me, and when I think of what he's done and where he has brought me from, I've got so much to thank him for, and when I think of what sing one verse. Let's sing the first verse of that again. I'm singing in the same key. When I look around and see the good things He's done for me, I know I'm unworthy of them all For His blessings He frees Thank you, Sister Anna. That was Amen. Amen. Praise God. That song. Yeah, I've been meaning to sing that song as a congregational, so I think now we're gonna sing it as a con Sister Anna, we appreciate inspiring it. <laughs> I don't know if we've sung it as a congregational, but I love that song. We have so much to thank him for, thank Amen. No need to be no need to be ha uh sad and you know. Uh, just so much to thank you. Brother Mark. Stand. No weapon formed, the Bible said. To be able to withstand the bride of Jesus Christ. We just got to believe it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. 
I was going to make an announcement. Now, Brother uh, Luis and his wife are leaving to go to Nicaragua. And Honduras. Yeah, to Honduras. Anyhow, he's going to minister. All right. Now, this is what we do. When a brother's going from here to a foreign country to preach, we pay his expenses to go. Now, I'm talking about the ticket expenses. I'm talking about all he spends, what he does, and everything. but we pay for him only, not for the wife now. So what we're going to do is give Brother Luis money today for Lisa's instructed to find out what the ticket cost would be for the expenses of the tickets over to where he's going. Not for her now, because make that plain. See, some people don't hear the second time you say things. They only hear the first. Well, I didn't hear that. But that's true. All right. And see, Wade will be paid then in like March. I think he's going to the Philippines. And his ticket for there will be paid. Not for June. I think she's going with him. But it will be for the <laughs> minister only. And when they're going to preach. Now, if you're going on vacation. No, 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 no. No. And that's foreign countries. That's not because you're going to Cleveland, Tennessee. To preach for them as foreign countries will pay the ticket of the one who's doing the ministering all right but now we always do this so i ask you if you'd like to we won't pass the plate won't do anything but if you want to give brother Luis something as an offering that's up to you that'll be your part see the church pays the expenses of the ticket that's not out of your pocket all right so if you want to give something to Brother Luis to help him as he is ministering and going, you feel free to do it because we always invite you to do that, okay? Does everybody understand? And that way, if you do, then give him the money himself to where he can pay the expense. We appreciate these brothers going and all, but we can't supply everything. So right. we do what we can and give what little bit we can to do those things. As I say in this morning, we will be held responsible because of that unbeliever, the heathen, that doesn't hear. So if these brothers go and try to minister to those, then the money you're giving is helping them to be able to go. So, okay, all right, just make sure you do that. All right, all minds clear, everything. All right, let's just sing, open the eyes of my heart as Wade comes to minister the word of the Lord unto us. All right. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see. Open the eyes. Now, if you need to write a check, clear it with Lisa, write it to the church. And we can give the money if you want to do that as your offering if you don't have cash, okay? I want to see you. of the Lord. Amen. Turn around and shake somebody's hand and say, God bless you. Brother Brown said, that's what you do. You tell them, say, God bless you. Greatest thing you can do. God bless you. God bless you, my buddy. Love you, man. God bless you, Brother Ryan. Bless you, man. God bless you, Brother Richard Roberts. God bless you, buddy. Love you, man. God bless you, Brother Dick. God bless you. Love you. Appreciate you. Any questions, Brother Daugherty? 
Everybody all right today? Amen. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord, like I said. Um, hey, Louie. Yo. Can you bring me some water, please? Uh, Bob's not here to... Sure. <clears throat> Bob's not here to... Uh, I got to grow a beard out. Do his job. Yeah, you got to grow a beard. Well, <laughs> I hope you don't grow one before you get that water up here. <laughs> one of you Lord bless you got a full house even with even with a bunch gone so good to uh, good to have uh, back in the, back in the home family you know we were gone last week brother old Teague said to tell everyone hello and he's doing good he's uh, he's doing fine his church is doing good good solid church so they're doing good so he said tell you hello and uh, and the Lord bless you so let's turn the Bibles to Revelation chapter 6 and we're going to start, now this is going to be first seal part one. We're not going to get the, uh, the board out today because uh, I kind of picked up another thought last night on some things that we were talking about and what Brother Dale and I were talking about this morning. And I kind of want to get that out of the way before we start into the symbols. Because remember, <clears throat> when we read this Revelation 6-1, that that was a that was a scene that happened in front of John, right? Exactly. It was a scene that happened in front of John, right. because physically you're never going to see a man on a white horse with a bow and a crown. Right. Physically, you're not you know you're not going to see a physical happening of that. Right. So it's a parable, an actor, it's symbols. Right. So it's, it, he was uh, John was commissioned to write what he saw. Right. Well, when the when the angel said, "Come and see." John wrote what he saw. Right. He saw a white horse rider, and he saw sitting on that horse, it was a man sitting on the horse, and he had a bow, and he was given a crown. We've been through that before, that power was given. This, whoever this person is has no power to start with. If we'll realize that, we won't have to preach these seals too much. Right. Amen? He didn't have any power. He had to get on a horse, right? He was given power to do these things, all right? So, and like Brother Gary Atkins says, who gives him the power to do it? We do. We're the ones that give him the power. I, I uh, want to kind of cover something in, in Genesis because remember Brother Brown said one seal tie the entire Bible together, right? Because it's a book of redemption and that's what we're going to talk about. Remember all that background that we went through several months ago of, of a foundation of, for the seals. All the, the seals together is one great revelation of who? Jesus Christ, not the devil. Right. Now, he's to be exposed or he's to be revealed. Now, we're going to read that in Thessalonians where he will be revealed. Right. But in his, in his being made known of the devil, what it does to me is, is it puts him over here so that we can notice what he's doing. Right. Because remember, most people that are deceived, and we're reading in Thessalonians, the devil's not out there. That's right. He resides. Right. He resides. And he, listen, in our spirit realm, he resides a lot in ours. So don't get so, so, don't get so high and pious that we're talking about the denominational world. No, he, he, works, he works in my members about as much as God does, and I'll probably say he works more than God does. Yeah. Amen? Right? right? Because we live, a, we live a common human life. And... And before the fall, oh, we'll get into it. It's Revelation 6, verse 1. You just pray for us that uh, I'm going to take my time, and, uh, and next Sunday we'll probably use the, use the board when we go because the last thing I want to talk about is the symbols because what we were talking about too downstairs is you got to remember that, that the seals were written or, or preached in Matthew 24 by the Lord Jesus himself. So it's not something new. Right. It's not something that's not written. That's why I want us to see that, that the seal is written. Amen. The thunder's what was the unwritten part, but yet it has to compare with every scripture in the Bible. Okay? So we're going to worry about the seal right here first. Right. We got to get the seal off so that we can see what's on the inside. Right? right? Okay? So we got to get the seal off first. And that's what the prophet's job was, was to take that seal off Amen? Because it was sealed up, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's read Revelation 6, verse 1, not keep you standing. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, that you'd be the active participant, Lord, again in this service, Father. We truly do live a common life that's controlled a lot of times by, by factors of, of life and things that we live, but, you know, that didn't bother you when you came down in human flesh. You sure you had to eat, you had to sleep, all those different things, but you had no guilty conscience because you knew who you was. Father, I pray that our conscience will be that we'll be clean, Lord, and we'll read some of that maybe later on about condemnation. Lord, th these seals shows us, I believe, that there is no condemnation to the bride of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. Bless this day, Lord. Be with the ones that are traveling, Brother Joe, um, Brother um, Bob out preaching for the brother there in, in Lawrenceville, Lord. I pray that you just touch them and give them strength. Forgive us of our sins. Bless this day. Take care of us. Anoint us for the job. All of us have a job to do, Lord, not just the anointing up here, but, Lord, may the anointing, Lord, that everyone brought their little lick of fire, and, Lord, may we put them together, and there'll be one great big flame. Father, we pray that you just touch us now. Be with us in this journey. Take care of us in this time of the year, Lord, where it's hustle and bustle and people running to and fro. And, and Lord, just settle us down for a few few hours here on Sunday and Wednesday and let us hear from you, Lord. Because truly you did come here for a purpose. You didn't just, you didn't just one wasn't born a baby so we could give Christmas gifts. You were born to give the greatest gift and that was a way back to the eternal life that we inherited before the foundation of the world. Father, give us this day our daily bread. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's what I think about Christmas. I love Christmas time. I love give gifts. But the greatest gift was that, that God came himself to, to get us, to make us a way back. You know, he, he didn't come to bring us an inheritance like we was, Brother Brown said. He didn't come to bring us our inheritance. He came to make us a way to get back to it. Our inheritance was the eternal life before the foundation of the world. Amen? So Revelation 6, verse 1. And I want to tell you something about that. Remember, on these seals, remember, and we'll get into it in just a minute, but I want to put this point in for you to think about it. These seals are the most important thing we'll ever, ever, ever have to contend with in this hour. You hear what I said, in this hour. Because everybody from Paul, Paul, I'm sure he probably spoke a few times on Revelation chapter 6, maybe. I, probably, or probably not. John, John wrote it after probably Paul was dead. So, but Paul had a revelation. Because the seals are in the Old Testament. Because if, if, if it'll tie every scripture together, then you can go back to Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and all those and bring the seals, which we may do later on. But Paul never come under this part of having to take a body change. Irenaeus never come. Even all the way down, even, even the Pentecostal age that we come out of. But we need that. So, so don't think that I'm saying that this, this um, and I'll get into it in a minute, it's something that I, that I really, I'm going to, bear heavy on, the breaking of the seals is, is really not for your soul. Right. 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 Amen. Paul was born again without knowing the seals. Right. Irenaeus was born again without knowing the seals. Right. Everybody, everybody from Paul to, to even today that hadn't heard it, right. you're born again by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Right. That's in your soul. Amen. These seals are a move up, and we'll read it in just a minute where Brother Brown talks on the first seal. It's a move up. It's a move up to get that spirit realm in line with that soul to get the body changed. Right. Amen? So this, that's why Brother Brown said it was the most, one of the most important and the most spiritual realm he'd ever worked in. Why? Because it was aligning us to where we can take a body change. Right. All right? And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard it was the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer, you may be seated in the Lord at his blessing. Now, remember, too, we're talking about in the beginning, God created man, what? In his own image. Now, what is an a mirror image? You got an image, and then you got the real person. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. You got the image, and you got the real thing, because what's inside that mirror is not real. It's an image of what is real. All right? So when we take these seals and we divide them up, you're going to see a reality here, which is God. And Satan is just an imposter. He's trying to be an image. 
I'll read it in Thessalonians. He wants to be as God. He can't be. He wants to be God, but he can't be God. He can imitate everything except being that person of God Almighty. He can't be that person. But now you say, well, what about us? Well, God, I believe, has made a way if Jesus Christ, if we're heirs and joint heirs with Christ, I keep harping on that in Revelation 8, we got to believe what the Bible says. If we're heirs and joint heirs with Christ, if he is standing somewhere in another dimension with a redeemed body, that's what we get. That's what we get. We get the same thing. Not something lesser. The same, the same identical thing. Amen. Brother Dick likes this scripture. If the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, right. so it can, right. it'll quicken your mortal body Amen. by that spirit that dwells in you. Right. But Matthew 24, verse 4, let's read this. <clears throat> Just get some of these scriptures out of the way. It's not going to be long today. We've got communion this afternoon, so we're going to... Uh, Got everything ready, so we're going to take communion after we get finished with this. Amen? Matthew 24 says, And Jesus answered and said unto them. Now, this is where Brother Brown picks up where they ask him, you know, the three questions. In Matthew 24, verse 4, the prophet of God brings this in as the seals. I believe in the sixth seal, he, God reveals them that reveals the seals to that Jesus had already preached them. Right. All right, but he, he will remember, he... Watch he does. He says, look, take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed. In other words, come and see. Notice. Take heed of what's happening. Because right. we're going to read Thessalonians, and we're going to read it kind of slow. I've never seen some of this till I... You know, sometimes we read Scripture. <laughs> we read Scripture, and we just read right through it. <laughs> and then if you go back, and then you take every word, or every, even just a phrase... And that phrase will tie things together that you've never seen before. Yet you've read 2 Thessalonians and you've read 2 Thessalonians and you've read 2 Thessalonians. And Brother Dale gets up and preaches on 2 Thessalonians and you'll go, I just read that the other day and I didn't get anything. Why? There's a seal. That's what I'm saying about the seal. There's a seal over your eyes. There's something over your eyes, not your eyes, but your understanding that God... Being born again, like uh, Brother uh, Peter told us, being born again, then you're being what? You're sealed until the day of your redemption. Right. Amen? But you un these seals have been unsealed. Right. The book's been open. Right. All right? So you and I ought to be able to understand and live. The Bible says live by what? Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we're going to try to keep this, not read many quotes, but try to keep this in the Bible. Right. Is that all right? And Jesus, because this is where Brother Branham got it. He got it out of the Bible. Amen. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Why? Because somebody's going to. Right. All right? For many, not one or two passing by, right. but many shall come in my name. Right. Now, wait a minute. Let's narrow this thing down. The Baptist does not come in the name of Jesus Christ. They come in the name of the Father and the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Ghost and make this one the second person. He's saying here, for many shall come in my name. In other words, knowing who I am. So I, I wrote down, if some of you that's got the notes, I wrote the message. Because the message is the only thing that reveals the true name of God. Amen. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. And shall deceive a few. It says many. So many will be deceived in this first opening of the seal. And we know the first seal. When it's open in its entirety, we see one true and living God. We've already been to that downstairs. But we'll work our way into that. All right. For those of you that, that was in the Sunday school class, you know, you some of you are going to sleep anyway. So you might as well go ahead and sleep because... Uh, You've already heard this, but it's going to be in a little bit different form than we heard it downstairs. All right, so let's now turn to 2 Thessalonians 2. I, I like Thessalonians. It's a, it's a good, uh, it's a good two, two uh, chapters to read. 2 Thessalonians. All right, look, now watch. Now, this is, we're going to break this down just for a minute. 
to get us a basis of what's going on. But remember, I want you to keep the word redemption in your mind. Keep that word redemption. Brother Bram said, hold that word redemption. We read that not too long ago. In other words, hold on to that. We're talking about redemption. We're going to talk about symbols and actors and what people did and what the bow stands for and what this stands for and what this stands for. But you remember one thing. As that is being made known or light is being shined on that, it's doing something to me and you. Okay? Because look, if, if, if uh, Martin Luther... See, this is what I, I... The Lord really impressed on me this, like Brother Brown said. If Martin Luther... See, Martin Luther, the just shall live by faith. He went to a pub and he drank beer. He was a German. Germans drink beer anyway. They drink beer like we drink tea. But he, but he drank beer and smoked a pipe and talked about God. Well, God was pleased with that revelation of that man at the time. But now if you took Martin Luther, though, with the same Holy Ghost you got, that's why I said that soul is sealed by what? Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, taking the word for your hour, as Brother Dale was talking about last night, the new birth is not just the Holy Ghost. You can be what? Anointed by the Holy Ghost every day in your life on your spirit and die and go to hell, right? But you can never get the new birth and die and go to hell. Never. Never can you get the new birth. You can never have a birth of the word that you hold on to and it quickens that word. You can never go to hell. That soul is sealed in. Right. Amen? That all right. So Martin Luther, though, bring Martin Luther today. Set him in the pew. He'd be on the front row, and I promise you he'd be at church more than most of y'all. <clears throat> well, the ones I'm talking to, it's like Terrence said the other day, so we were talking about somebody, uh, people having two services, and now they only have one. He said, well, we've got people here that decided that a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You'll get that in a minute. Those of you that are not here are going to get it again. But anyway, which is true. But Martin Luther, look at what he would do, though. He would take what's already in his soul, and then he would absolutely, at the moment, quit thinking about drinking beer. At the moment, quit thinking about smoking the pot. At the moment, he would. this word would absolutely, you couldn't keep him. You couldn't keep him like what Brother Brown said. If Paul came back here today, right. in other words, I'm going to paraphrase that, and heard what I'm preaching, right. not me, but Brother Brown. If Paul walked in and set him in one of Brother Brown's meetings, he'd be like a house on fire on a windy day. He would have been in jail, the prophet of God said, by morning. Why? Because he would take what the things he saw in part. Now we see in its fullness. We've got everything we need. Look, what about Paul going to the Old Testament? Now what about Paul writing 80% of the New Testament? But watch if he took that and took the took the amplified version or took the prophet's message and run it through his filter, he can't come out with something different. These seals is not something different. Yet it is. But it's not different than what's going to come from right here. Not different. But it is something that nobody's ever known, so I guess you can consider it different. All right? I, to most, it's unusual. But that's the difference in unusual and and different, that ye be not, look, now watch, this is Paul. Now watch what he's saying. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word. Now he's bringing it all together. Nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. He's telling the people something's going to have to happen. Now, we can say, by revelation, we can say now, see, if Paul would read his own writings, he'd say, you're here. You're at that day right now. Paul was looking at a day. Every prophecy, something I was thinking about not too long ago, every prophecy is pointing to us, but man, we're making it live today. We're not prophesying of something to come anymore. What are we prophesying to come? Resurrection's already in you. The rapture's already in you. Everything's already in you. Right. Amen. All right. Amen. That's what these seals is going to do. The seals are going to make, it's going to absolutely make us, we got to think different. Yeah. We got to think different. Amen. That's why I said about different. You said, well, it's different. Well, it is different, but it's not going to come from something different like a, a new message book no. uh, or, uh, uh, you know, something, uh, Brother, um, 
Brother Alty gave me two books by a man, and I'm really going to read them because it's really, to me, it's showing how that, you know, Brother Branham said that the, the World Council of Churches are the Protestants and the Catholics. Now, what's the only thing they differ now in? The sacrament or the, the wine and the blood being blood and the body being the literal body, right? Man, this guy writes a, uh, it's a big, thick book, but I'm going to read it. But he's, that, sacri that sacri sacrosacrism society started way back. But anyway, we'll get into that a little bit later. I'm going to bring it into, into a message. But it, 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 i tell you what's going to happen. It, it showed something that I have told y'all since I started preaching. Our persecution is going to come from within. Right. Our persecution will never come from a Baptist or a Methodist or a Presbyterian or a Pentecostal. It's going to come from somebody maybe sitting right beside you today. And you know what? They're not going to be able to help some of it. Because that spirit entered. Okay? But we'll, we'll, we'll get into it a little bit later. That's why we need to bring it all home. That's why we need to be aware that something's happening. That God's bringing something, what? To just a special group of people. Amen? Now look. Now watch. As the day of Christ, as that the day of Christ is at hand. In other words, forget it, guys. The day of Christ is not at hand at that moment. All right? Because he looked, said, don't be shaken in mind, don't be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Look, let no man deceive you by any means, Amen. for that day shall not come. Now, it's going to come. It's here. But he's saying that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Now, to me, it's a falling away of the word. We could be sitting here today and falling. Amen? We could be sitting right here today and be falling away. Right. Amen? Or falling asleep like you're already starting to do. Falling away first. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play you all that video. They sent me a video of T.D. Jakes, and he's screaming, Wake up! Wake up! He was telling the people to wake up out of their sleep. Of course, they were shouting all over the place. But Anyway, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Exactly. All right, except, so now that we see that the seals are open, the son of perdition is being exposed. Right. Amen? So, so we're living this. Amen. Right. Paul wrote this, never lived it. You and I are living this. Glory. All right? That's what, the, to me, the seals, to me, the seals is come and see. Watch what's going on. This thing's riding. This thing's moving. There's something going on all the time. Until you get to what? The seventh seal. Then there's silence. No movement. We'll get to that. We'll get to that maybe by next Christmas. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed. So he's got to be revealed. He's got to be made known. All right? The son of perdition. Watch who opposes and exhausted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God. Where? Right here. Right? right. right? Showing himself that he is God. Remember what? Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Right. And look, I made myself a note here somewhere. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Right. That's now. Right. He's pointing, he knows that the mystery of iniquity doth already work, right. but that it's going to culminate in a man. Right. One man. Exactly right. It comes to a system, but it's going to culminate in a man. Amen. All right. And now you know what withholdeth. What? All this. That he might be revealed in this time. Watch. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Right, right. Only what he, now Brother Brown said that he, see how God hides it? That he to me, if you go through all of the, uh, of the capital lettering and all that of the Bible, that he should have been capital because that he is God. Amen? But God hid it, just like the mighty angel that come down is Christ and it's a little a. God hides these things so a prophet can bring them out, right. but then when he shows it to us, it's not like, well, I don't know if he's right or not. No, you know it's exactly what this Bible's saying. 
Right, only he who now led it. I was telling somebody the other day, we were talking about downstairs, <coughs> Brother Louise, we are talking about trials and tribulations. Listen, God, remember, God never had an oops moment. He never had a moment that he said, I really shouldn't have done that. So every move God made to you, trial, tribulation, whatever it is, it's for your perfection. He can't make a mistake. That's why I have to put my trust in him. I make a thousand mistakes, but through him, I hadn't made a one. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. What's iniquity? Doing something you're not supposed to do, you do it anyway. You know what you're doing? You're overriding. You're overriding. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're what? Sealed. Your spirit's not sealed. We're going to get into that. Your soul is sealed. Your spirit's not. Amen? Because that's what got Adam and Eve into trouble. Satan didn't, couldn't work down in the soul of, of Adam and Eve, so he knew that he could get to their spirit. Because right. remember, before, before the fall, Adam had no memory of sin. Right. Adam had no conscious of sin. Because remember, memory, reason, conscious, affection, and imagination. Adam didn't have any of that wrong before the fall. He was in tune with God. His soul and his spirit was in tune with God. Amen? But now remember, though, his body was being renewed. He wasn't eternal. Okay? All right, so, so just remember that. Hold that point. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he, God, who now let it. He's letting it happen. Will let until he. Now that he, Brother Brown says, is the bride. Till he be taken out of the way. Do you know that Daniel 70 weeks, the culmination of that is waiting on you? Bringing two prophets on the scene to preach the gospel is waiting on you. Those 144,000 are over there somewhere in the Middle East waiting on me and you to get what? Out of the way. And then shall that, because remember, look, Jesus preached the seals. 2,000 years ago. Then the prophet of God broke them to us now. We're in our feeble way trying to explain it or, or we're not helping the prophet, I promise you, one bit. We're hindering. But we're what? We're bringing it to our, back to our remembrance. But those seals don't really open until the wicked one comes. Right? We got to get out of the way, right? Here's what it says. Until he, the bride, be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed. Right. Yeah. What? In that last in that last week of Daniel seventy weeks, yeah. that's when he's going to be revealed. Right. See, so that's when the seals are going to break. Right. He's going to get on the white righteous church. Right. Remember, the two prophets are the sixth seal. Yeah. Oh, you got it. But we got to break them here now. It's got to be broke to you. Amen. Doesn't matter if it's broke to Brother Dale, right. but it really does because through him, since him being the pastor, through him you got to get it. Right. Amen. Because look, if you look, if not, and here we go again. Then why have we not took a rapture if Brother Branham broke them? And I'll read it. I'll save it for next Sunday. Brother Branham says, when they're broke in their entirety. He said in their entirety, he said, then what? The door will be closed. So they were broke back then in 1963. I believe the seals broke to the prophet, but no one else. No one else. But when they're broke in their entirety, that's when the lamb takes the book and steps forth. Because remember, once he takes the book, he doesn't redeem anymore. He's a judge. And boy, I tell you, you're talking about a, a message, folks. I'm telling you. That word that, that Brother Dale's been preaching on compassion and sympathy, man, talk about bringing something out more of how God works and how he deals with things. Man, to me, that was a seal that broke. Amen? That was a seal that broke right there. That was a thunder that's been what? It's been all, I was looking up condemnation and all the different things and back here and never looked up condemnation that much and then I looked up compassion, and if you got to dig in, you'll see that they're the same, but they're different. Yeah. 
A sympathetic God is a grandpa. Right. A compassionate God is a judge. Right. A compassionate God, to be compassionate, I mean, to be sympathetic, you can't be a judge. Because right. you sympathize with everything. Right. There's no judgment. Right. But a compassionate God brings the judge on the scene. Right. Amen? Yes. All right. I didn't want to preach a sermon for you, but... And then shall that, but I just, it just, those two words, just two words will open when you separate them. Right. It opens up, a, it, it, what it does, it makes me understand more because, hey, folks, we got questions on questions on questions about what the Bible says. Questions about, listen, we're full of questions. Right. And that's all right, as long as what? We can strike them off and say, that one's done. Right. We can strike them off and say, that one's done. Because when we get down to our last question, can I walk through that wall? Then I'm going to be able to walk through that wall. Exactly right. And then shall that wicked be revealed. You think it's funny. Yeah. One day we're going to walk through that wall. Yeah. Right. You think Brother Tatum's got to open that door to walk in? No. 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 He's not going to have a question either. He's just going to walk through the door. Right. Not in, through. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume. Now, when does he do that? Remember, he does that over in the tribulation period, right? Takes him out of the way. And remember, that man's thrown in the lake of fire before the judgment, before white throne judgment, right? Him and the false prophet and the beast, all those, remember, they go in first. Whom what? Shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Now, what's happened is, is we come down... So now, that's what's happening to you and I. Right. The only way we're getting a revelation is to hear it right. by somebody speaking it with a spirit out of their mouth. Amen. Amen. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, that's the coming that we're, gonna, we're not going to see. Right. Okay. That's not the coming that we're talking about. Right. This is the coming after everything's done. We're already taken out of the way. So look, let's just de- use some deduction here. If we're taken out of the way right here, this doesn't apply to us. Right? right. Exactly. If we're gone, but we got to get the revelation of it to get us out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, to you and I, that is the part of we got to see as far as taking our body chain. But remember, he's going to come as a thief in the night. This is where he's going to, they go, everybody's going to see him. Right. Amen? All right? Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. That beast is going to speak over there when we get out of here. And the only thing that's going to combat him is those two prophets. Right? right? That's the only thing that can stand against that man because he's what? He's Satan incarnate now. Right. You know why he's Satan incarnate? Because God's incarnate, incarnated in a group of people right. and Satan is a copycat and, and there's no way he can incarnate a man until God incarnates you and I. Exactly right. Amen? And we get out of here. Amen. Right. All right? And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not, didn't that they receive, didn't receive the truth. That love right there is not filial love. That's agape love. That's the headstone. That unless what? Because they receive not the headstone of the truth, that they might be what? Saved. Amen? So they, what? They they receive a lie. And they're damned by it. Is that Okay. Let's read what Brother Brown said in the watch. <clears throat> on the first seal, 1963. And at the end of the Pentecostal age, we're supposed to receive according to the word, as God helped me tonight to show you through here, that we are to receive a messenger, messenger that will take all those loose ends out there and reveal the whole secret of God for the rapturing of the church. Look, now watch. And then there's coming forth seven mysterious thunders that's not even written at all. That's right. And I believe that through these seven thunders will be revealed in the last days in order to get the bride together for rapturing faith. Right. Is that all right? Look. Look what he says. I didn't highlight these. I'm sorry. 
because what we got right now, we wouldn't be able to do it. What we got right now, Lula Church, we won't be able to do it. There's something we've got to step further. We can't have enough faith for divine healing hardly. We've got to have enough faith to be changed in a moment and be swept out up out of this earth and we'll find that after a while the Lord will and find where it's written. Now, he said right up here it wasn't written. But it's written right here because it's written in the Bible. It's the whole Bible. Look, then all the judgments of these evildoers. Now, watch. Remember, the judgment of the evildoers is not, watch, he moves right over into when we get out of here. Okay? Because remember, Satan's not judged today. He's judged in me and you. Out of us. But remember, he's not going to be judged for what he's doing until we get, gone, until we get out of here. Right? Because right. Right? Right, what? Then all the judgments of these evildoers. Now, see down through the ages as the seals has been breaking. See, right. they did break in symbol form down through the church ages. Right. Do you hear me? I said symbol form right. down through the church ages. But it wasn't broke to Paul or Irenaeus or Martin, yet they were included in that first seal because the first seal, remember, represents the first three church ages. We'll get into that a little bit later. All right? As a symbol. Listen, you and I are not symbols. We're real people. Amen? And everybody else has gone on. They're gone on. All right? Now, see, down through the ages as these seals have been breaking until now the last seal is broken. And now as, as they have been watching in on these seals and just presuming what they were doing, no doubt Clarence Larkin got a revelation, but he didn't get a full revelation. Right. He didn't, listen to me, he didn't get a prophetic revelation because he wasn't a prophet. Right. Right. I don't depend on what Clarence Larkin said, but he did speak truth. Right. Okay. I don't depend on what Billy Graham said, but he did speak truth. Right. Amen? Right? But, it, but I depend on what the prophet of God said. Exactly. The essence of this message, I include all 1,100 and something sermons. Okay. Yeah. Amen? Amen? As they have been watching in on these seals and just presuming what they were doing. Because okay. remember, Clarence Larkin could say the white horse rider was the Antichrist, but he couldn't take you no further. All he saw was that. Right. You got it? There, okay, Brother Mark. He got that's that's that that right there. That right there is is not what we need for a body change. That's what we need for a body change. Clarence Larkin couldn't get in this unwritten part, right? He could get a revelation of the seal. That's why I said, Brother Brown said, the seals and the thunders two different things. All right? There's no way. No one had a revelation of those seals except that prophet. Right. No one. Amen. They could probe at it. Why probe at it? Why, my Lord, we probed and prodded and presumed all the time. But Jesus never. We got to go back to the person. Jesus never poked and prodded. Right. He said, I am. Well, I might be. The, New, the Old Testament may have spoken to me just a little. I don't really know. I, he, no. He knew what he was talking about. Right. right. Why? Because he was a fulfillment. He was a... And I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. You're a fulfillment or a culmination of what I just read you in Thessalonians. Exactly right. It, it brings the two together. And now as they have been watching in these seals and just presuming what they were doing, now at the end of the ages, of the church ages, now at the end, see, all these evildoers will take place and head up in the what? Tribulation. All right. All of these evil doers of the seven seals has been working mysterious in the church. Sure. Been working what? Right. Underneath. Right. Satan's been working underneath, weaving his way through the church. Because a mystery of iniquity started in the first church age. Right. All right. All these evil doers will take place and head up in the tribulation. All of these evil doers of the seven seals has been working mysterious in the church. And we'll find out in a minute they even work in the name of a church. Right. They call themselves the church. You just see if that isn't right. No wonder I have been so against denomination, not knowing why, CC. They end up... Now, it starts back here in a mild form. We'll talk about that later. Saying, 
deed doctrine. All right. Amen. Now it starts back here in the mile four. Listen, all doctrines start with two people talking. Right. right. All doctrines started with, well, what do you think about what Brother Ram said about? Right? Right. And then what? One person will what? Say, well, I got the revelation and I'm going to tell you what it is. You know, we've been talking about this, but you got to listen to me now. You know, yeah. that's the way Satan is. Now, it starts back here in a mild form. Just keeps getting worse and worse on down until, and people go right into it saying, oh, yes, this is just fine. But in the last days, these things are made known, and they finally go so bad until they go plumb into the tribulation period. He said that twice. Yeah. Right. Exactly right. So remember, the seals break in the tribulation period. Hello? Right. Right. What did you say? Exactly right. yeah. The physical seal. The physical man is standing there with power given to him to do things. Amen? Because remember, the sixth seal, the two prophets are standing on earth when, those seals, when the sixth seal breaks. Right? So they got to be involved in the seals because who are they opposing? The horse rider. Because he's riding. And they oppose him. That all right? But remember, as two prophets, you say, "Well, we got to wait till the tribulation period for the seals to break." There will no tribulation period come without us getting a revelation of those seals. They won't, like I just said, they won't. Two prophets come without us getting a revelation of those seals now. There won't come the Antichrist in his fullness until we get out of here. Right. Amen? He's working. He's working. He's not dead, folks. He's working. He's still riding, but what are we doing? We're bringing him to expose him. We're bringing him up so that we can look at him and say, hey, that's not what we're supposed to do. Right. We have a commission to do away with death. Right? And who is death? That white horse rider, exactly right. that red horse rider, that black horse rider, that pale horse rider. That's all, he's dead. He is dead. He's dead while he's walking. Right. Amen? Amen? Bible says she's dead while she's living. I was thinking the other day, so <laughs> the devil is too. Amen. He's dead while he's walking. He, he, when he did what he did, he's done. Right? Now let's read number two, and then we'll try to get into a few thoughts here on what happened a little bit more in the garden. Yeah. Now look. Number two, first seal. We're still in the first seal. Now, the seventh seal, and I want to tell you just one thing. See where that says roll book? I was reading the seal book, and I read that quote. It says rolled. So there was a typo one way or the other. I haven't listened to the sermon. I'm just telling you this, so if you ever want to look that up again, if you look at the quote in the book, it says rolled book, L-R-O-L-L-E-D. And when I put rolled book in the search, it come up zero. I said, there's no way. I'm looking at the quote in the seal book. But when I put book is now being released, that's what come up. It says roll, but it's, it's the rolled book. It's not roll. That's a roll. The book didn't roll. That's a roll of the book. All right, like this. This is the roll. Right. All right. Now, the seventh seal, just want to tell you that in case you want to look it up. Now, the seventh seal roll book is now being released by the Lamb. We approach that place tonight. God help us. As the seals are broken and released, the mysteries of the book are revealed. Now, you see, this is a sealed book. Yeah. Let's stop right there for a second. This is a sealed book. Right. When was it sealed? In the Garden of Eden. Right. Exactly. When Adam couldn't produce, because remember, if Adam would have produced the product he was supposed to produce, we wouldn't need a seal. Exactly right. Amen and amen. We wouldn't need a seal. Right. Because if the seals is a redemption of our body, bringing us to full redemption, Adam didn't need it at the time. Right. Amen. So only after the fall, I was thinking the other day, remember I preached that sermon on two lives. Because right. see, our first life is dead. Right. Yeah. Right. Amen? Yeah. We're born in sin, shaping iniquity. Right. But now remember, that's a reverse with Adam. Yeah. Adam came to the world with the real life that we're supposed to live. Yeah, exactly. right. And he fell to that other life. Right. That's why they call it a fall. Yeah. 
So because of that, though, we've got to reverse the process. We got to come from the first life and go back to that life because remember, Adam did not have an Adamic nature until after the fall. Adam, Adam's spirit and soul were not warring. That's what I want to talk about here for a few minutes. They were not beating each other up. Right? So where were the seals? Where did the seals come into being? In the Garden of Eden. When the fall happened, that brought a manifestation that without the fall, we'd never seen it. But without the fall, that takes the title of Redeemer away. The very thing I told you, if I ever wanted to call, uh, Brother Dick likes to call him the creator. I like to call him the creator too. But if he wasn't the redeemer, it didn't matter how much he created. Right? right. right? It didn't matter. But redemption tells me that that creator knew we were going to fall. And what more is like we were talking about the other day. What a bunch of spoiled brats. If we just have everything. Sympathy. Sympathy. God wasn't sympathetic in the garden, I'll promise you. No. No, like I said, that's a grandpa. We're, we're, grandpas are sympathetic. We just really have brain damage when you become a grandfather, when you become a grandparent. But God's not a granddaddy. He's a father. He's just. Amen? All right, so let's finish this quote, and then I'll, then I'll finish my, my point here in a second. This is the sealed book. Now, remember where it was sealed. It was sealed... When, when Adam had the ability to, to produce us, right? right. The book was sealed. Right. Man, the book was sealed and God took it and said, they can't, nobody see this. Right. You say, prove it to me. God said, Daniel, seal it up. Right. Until what? The time of the end. Right. Seal it up till the time of the end. Because remember, it was just a temporary seal. It was just a temporary seal. To get us back to eternity, we're not going to need a seal. Once we get into eternity, it's going to be back to where Adam was at. To me, it's just one plus one equals two. Amen? So the book was sealed in the Garden of Eden. Now what? As the seals are broken and released, though, look, the mysteries of the book are revealed. Now, you see, this is a sealed book. Now, we believe that, do we not? We believe that it is a sealed book. Now, we never know this before, but it is. It's sealed with seven seals. That is on the back of the book. The book is sealed with seven seals. All right, let's keep reading. If we were talking about this kind of book, he's talking about, I'm sure he's talking about like this, it would be like putting a strap across it, just like I said about a hand right here. Seven straps, but it isn't that kind of a book. It's a scroll. And then when the scroll is unwound, that's one. Then laying right in that scroll is number two. You just keep opening it, but it's a mystery. But look, watch. But yet we have probed in it. But remember, the book is sealed. And the book is a book of mystery of revelation. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ, not the Antichrist. It exposes him. Sure, it reveals him to a point, but... How much more, if we presumed, then we could be wrong, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. right. Presume you could be wrong. That's right. Right. But when this book is open, when the seals come off of this book, right. there's nothing wrong with this book. Right. And there's nothing wrong with what's inside of this book. Glory. And I thought you and I were supposed to be inside of this book. Right. Amen? So we're not presuming. When you're born again, listen, if you're presuming, you're in trouble. That's right. right. But when you know you're locked in, the revelation of Jesus Christ, a book of revelation, and now you know down through the ages, man has probed and tried to get into it. We all have. Martin Luther probably tried his best to further his revelation, but he couldn't. He couldn't. Why? Because the anointing for that hour was to do what he said to do, and he done it, give it to the people, went off the scene. That's a pattern in every age, even this age. Amen? Same way in this age. You can't be any different. There's no, there's no, God doesn't get out of that pattern. He brings a message. He brings a messenger. I mean, he brings a messenger, brings a message, gives it to the people, and takes a messenger off the scene. All right? We know down through the ages they probed at it, 
and tried to get into that. He says, we all have. So we've all tried to do it. We've all tried to, and I say, I don't say we, I say all of Christendom has tried to, in some way, get a revelation. But once you start on the wrong, like the Baptists, if they start on the wrong, if you start on the wrong path, you got to right the ship somewhere. Because if you go Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Trinitarian, you're never going to get to the truth. The truth's back that way. And they just kept walking. That's why Brother Brown said the people were fine. It was what? That denominational idea. Okay? That denominational idea is what turned them, what? The deed, the doctrine, and all those things we'll get into a little bit later. All right? I made myself a note right here. Now look, <clears throat> we'll skip Revelation 5. Just save time. Go to where it says redemption, redemption, redemption. <clears throat> Everybody knows what Revelation 5 is, breaking of the seal. Now look, right. I wrote myself a note. Redemption, redemption, redemption. So think about it. redemption, redemption, redemption. Redemption means that if you drop this on the floor, you got to pick this back up. But you can't pick, if it's laying right here and you throw it down and you pick it back up and put it over here. That is bringing it back, but it's not bringing it back to its original place. So whatever we fell from, it's got to come back to its original place for full redemption. All right, everybody okay with that? So look, the breaking of the seals, we'll finish with this, and then we'll look at the symbols a little bit, and then we'll close. Breaking of the seals is not necessarily for the soul. Now, when I say not necessarily, I'm like Brother Dale. When you say just, that takes everything out of the way. When you say the, John the Baptist, John... A Baptist would mean there was others, but John the Baptist was one. So I didn't want to say that breaking of the seals is not not for the soul. It's not necessarily for the soul. Your soul feeds off of it. Your soul feeds off the breaking of those seals. But the breaking of the seals has nothing to do. Your soul is redeemed by the new birth, by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, by believing. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Don't say believe on the seven seals and thou shalt be saved. Right? That's why I said many Christians, many born-again believers down through those church ages are going to resurrect, come back in glorified bodies and never heard maybe a sermon preached about the seven seal. Okay? But now we can't disclude that and say that it's not important because to them it wasn't, but to us it is. It's our commission. We have a commission. We have an anointing. We were talking about anointing last night. We have an anointing that goes with the new birth that we have. Messenger of Malachi 4 does two things, remember? All right. But by the shed blood of Jesus Christ at Calvary, we're born again believers. That seals our soul so that nothing can get in and nothing can get out. Amen? And we feed off of the revelation of the word. Amen? But remember, our spirit, as I was telling them last night, our soul is spinning in this direction and our, body, and our spirit's spinning in the other direction. Because okay. we lean toward that Adamic nature. We all got it. Right. I wrote myself a note. See, the Adamic nature was not in Adam's soul. Right. The Adamic nature that the Scripture's talking about is the nature right. that we have. That's right. That spirit realm of memory, reason, conscience, affection, imagination. But... but the breaking of the seals will bring full fellowship back into manifestation. Okay. That's the way I believe it. Because remember, before the fall, Adam and Eve were one, but their body, and, I mean, but forget about the body. The body just moves when something inside of it tells it to. When we say, I was telling Dad last night or, or in there a minute ago, when we say the redemption of the body, that means that we're supposed to, to me, in our brain, we think about, well, I've got to clean this thing up. It's got to come from the inside. Right. This is just a shell. The only way you, the way you die is, I was thinking about this when June's mom was, was passing away. I'm sorry, a little morbid. But anyway, you think about it. The reason her soul left her body is, is it couldn't function anymore like a human. That's the only way it was released. When your body quits functioning altogether, Ruth, when your body quits functioning, your soul's got to leave. The soul can't stay in that body. Right? So your body's just a shell. It's a shell that holds everything together. And I don't mean your guts. 
I mean, it holds all that fire mechanism. All that stuff is going off because remember, when you pass away, these don't work anymore. Right? No organ is working. What's making your organs work now? It's not only your body. That spirit inside of you is what's making it work. That spirit inside of you is what's making that thing work. Because remember, even if you get your spine severed, your mind is still working. Your brain is still working. And you know what? Your heart's still beating. A lot of things work. Some don't work, but... You got to remember one thing. This body, then, when we say the redemption of the body, don't think we got to get this thing cleaned up. Right. Or that we've got to get 2020 glasses if we can't see 2020. That's not it. The redemption of the body is when all, like I said, when everything comes into fellowship together. When the spirit and the soul starts working back together again. The problem is, is when Adam, watch, Adam had no conscience of sin. He wasn't even guilty. We guilt ourselves to death. But before the fall, Adam was so in tune with his memory, reason, conscious affection, and imagination, he had no imagination. What do you imagine? Well, I imagine that's God. No, that was God. I imagine the word's right. I'm talking about us. I imagine the word's right. No, it's right. Memory. That's what kills most of us. Adam had no memory of sin. He had no memory of I was afraid. Right? His conscience never bothered him. Oh, hallelujah. That's why, that's why they, they say that a, a, an animal can lay down and just fall asleep. I think dad's got a little bit of animal in him. Because, buddy, before the lights go out, he's gone bye-bye. But a dog will go to swine because they have no conscience. A dog, uh, an animal doesn't have a conscience. So he's not guilty. But you and I are conscious, memory, reasoning, conscious, affection, imagination. That's the five things. And that, that, that affection is not agape affection. Remember, you love with your spirit. The prophet, what the prophet said, you love with your spirit, but you love God with your soul. Because it is God. It is God. Because like I said before, Adam, Adam in his, watch what happened in his, even in his God-like condition. When Eve did what she did, laid with the beast, brought it to him, filial love take over? No. No, the agape love of God took over. That soul stepped out and said, oh my, what have we done? I can't kill you, Eve, because you're part of me. Right. Amen. That wouldn't be in his spirit realm. But to, look, memory, reasoning. Well, what did Adam reason about? Think about this. What did Adam reason about? He can sit down and go, now I shouldn't have called that a tiger. Because I think maybe God didn't want me to call it a tiger. No, he never had. That's what it was. That's what it was. That's what God even... God didn't, God didn't say, wait a minute, Adam. He said, that's exactly what I was thinking. So you and I, with our stinking thinking, what, who do we question? Sure, we question ourselves. We question ourselves, but we question God. God, why did you? Because Adam said, God said, Adam, where art thou? He said, I was afraid. In other words, it was a question. Can I approach this God now with what I just done? See, that didn't come from his soul. His soul longed for God. His soul was a part of God. If he, had, if, he, if he had Holy Ghost in his soul, if his soul was eternal as God is, then that was God in there. Because I was thinking the other day, you know, we think of all the bad things, even what Eve did. I'll be a little carnal here for a minute. We think, I'm trying to help us to, to not beat ourselves up so much. Because if these seals are for our redemption of the body, then we got to work outside of that soul. There is therefore now no condemnation. Who cannot believe that? But we condemn ourselves. But you take you take the things we do in life. Most of the things we do in life are contrary to God. You're in your humanity. In your humanity, you go to work. We gonna work in the future home? 
Did Adam have to work? No. We have to eat and do them other things that's connected with food. Right? That's what I'm telling you. Our carnal mind, though, tells us where we're no good because we do X, Y, Z. A husband and wife. The bed's, non -def bed's undefiled. Amen? It's not shameful if you do it right. God give us a way to do everything right. What? To get to make us realize that we're not so bad. But it's going to take God Almighty to tell us that. It's going to take... He put it in here already. He already put it in the Word. It don't come from Greer's Almanac. It don't come from our McDonald's Almanac. It doesn't come from a what? Joyce Myers. I hope she, I hope she is watching. You need to wear some no earrings and let your hair grow out. Her hair's shorter than mine. But everybody loves Joyce Myers. Why? Because she tells you good things. Sympathizer. Sympathy. Most denominations are sympathetic. They're, they're sympathy. You know, you just come where you want to. You know, you can come. Oh, bless your heart. Lord bless you. No. The compassion that we have is we want them all saved. But the compassion that we have, though, is is going to stand one day and judge them people. Because remember, the compassion that God had can't be separate from the compassion you have if you're born again. Right? That's why this whole seal thing I want you to see is it's not God up here and us down here. And God forbid, I don't want to make him a piece of paper. But the position. I thought Jesus Christ, we're heirs and joint heirs. Whatever he's got, we get. He's standing somewhere with an eternal body. And remember, Brother Branham said, Satan tempted Jesus. Never did he tempt Jesus in his body. Can't tempt a body. Body just reacts. You can't tempt his soul. You can't even hardly attempt his spirit, but he did. Satan, what? tempted him, but remember, it doesn't matter about the temptation. You and I partake of it. He didn't. Because remember, before the fall, there, even if anything was to come up to Adam, how could he handle it? You understand what you get it? How could he have handled it? He didn't know how to handle it because he'd never handled it before. What am I telling you? When we get into glory, when we get to the future home, we're not going to have to handle situations. Right. Amen? When we take a body change, what are we going to handle? I've done told you, like I tell Sister Trudy. I really don't care what we're eating at the future, at the wedding supper. I really don't care what we're doing in the millennium. You say, you don't care? No, I don't. Because look, what I got inside of me, if I got it inside of me, it's going to take me there. Right. And it's going to be what? All sufficient. I'm not going to go to the millennium and go, what am I doing here? Why am I not? All we're doing now is sharpening the edges. The big thing should be taken care of. All we're doing is we're sharpening the edges. Now remember, if Adam had no conscience of sin and no guilty conscience and obviously no memory of, of sin, until after the fall. Right. Amen? Right. So something was sealed up. And I was trying to show them last night a little bit, kind of what I want to, you know, I was talking about the, um, the your soul spinning in this direction. And, because you, remember, your spirit's what's contrary to God. Right. Right. Now, you were born in sin. Your body came from an act that should have never happened, but it did, and it was allowed by God. But that spirit realm is where both people can work. God and Satan can work. Right? right? Man, so what happened with Adam? And I'm gonna to try to find that quote where Brother Brown said Adam was Adam was his everything got clouded after the fall. Because remember, his spirit and his body worked hand in hand before the fall. Right. This has got a lot to do with the seals. I don't know whether you believe it or not, but it does. Because we got to understand. His soul was still. You can't remember the Bible says, "Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're what sealed." Until the day of your redemption. So the soul is sealed. You can't. Look, 
You can't even, when Paul said, I will, I'm warring in my members, it wasn't in the soul. It was in his spirit realm. You don't war against God in your soul unless you're what? Not born again. There's your war. But all it does is it brings that war out to that outside, that middle realm of mem- Listen, please write memory, reason, conscience, affection, imagination down on a piece of paper because that's your problem. It's not that your body aches. No, that's because of the, you got, you're wearing out. Your soul's not wearing out. I thought your soul was 20 years old. <laughs> Amen? So you're not hurting in your soul unless you're hurting for God. But really in your soul, because remember, you got to take that soul and once it's born again, you, gotta, you can't touch it. Nobody can touch it. God can't even take it away from you. He can't. It's a free gift. He's given it to you. You shall receive the what? Gift of the Holy Ghost. The problem with Adam was is somewhere in there, his soul and his spirit detached. Somewhere it, somewhere it detached. And then this is, this is the soul. This is not the Adamic nature that we, that we this is the problem over here. Is that all right? Somewhere they don't work in continuity That's anymore. Right. Amen? Because right. Amen? Amen. once you're born again, let me, one more time, once you're born again, you've got all the fullness. That's right. That's right. You're part. You're not the fullness of the Godhead by That's not what I said. I said you get the fullness of God. Right. That's right. All you need. Right. So where's the problem? It's that metal hub that's what? Hugging that soul. Let me go. Let me go. And Satan's saying, no, no. But there's your Adamic nature. Right? That's your problem. Listen, my problem is my memory. My problem is my conscience, heavenly days. Reasoning. My affection. And Lord, there is no imagination in God. Thank God for a prophet, though, that could separate those and tell us there was faith or doubt in the soul, five senses in the spirit, and five senses on the outside. Thank God. But somewhere Adam became detached from that. And that what? That was what? After the fall. So what? So when Abel was born, he he was detached some way. Because you and I are the same way. But what are we going back to, though? If it was pulled apart in the garden, it's got to be put back together. So let's don't glory in that it was pulled apart. Let's glory in that there was a way made back that we can get back to that continuity between get them both spinning in the same direction. Amen? Because really the seals is not to redeem this shell. That's right. It's to bring everything back in harmony with God. In other words, plug it back in. Because remember, your spirit realm is not born again. Amen? Just something to think about. Your spirit realm is not born again. Only your soul. If you're born again. If you're born again now. Listen, if you're not then you're warring in an inside guy. Really, you're black. On the inside, it's just smutty, devil, possessed. Sorry. No gray areas. To me, the gray area is on the outside. The memory reason, that's where the gray area is. But inside, you're either white or black. And I'm not saying color. You understand what I'm saying? You're either white Righteous, and everything's done away with. There's not one little speck somewhere. Right. God Amen. cleans that thing out. Amen. And resides. Come on. Puts Amen. himself in there. Amen. And Amen. then he starts working, and here we go, That's start it. hugging it. <laughs> well, remember, Paul said, I'm warring in my members. He didn't say I was playing. Right. He said, I'm warring in my members. Why? He had a memory. 
His conscience was killing him because he had those Christians killed. What in the name of the religion he thought he already had? That's our problem. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed. But remember, that is your earnest. That is your earnest until the full possession. And the full possession for me and you is not something we got to go in another dimension to get. We got to get it in this dimension. Yes. It's in this dimension we got to get this. Because remember, when the seal's open, it shows Christ. It shows the head. It shows the head in its fullness, in its completeness. Amen? Is that all right? So it has a lot to do. The see, this, this, to me, this is when Brother Branham preached for, what, since 1933, he really started preaching. From 1933 to 1963, he was warring right. in his members. Not in his soul. He was born again. Right. But he was warring in that spirit realm. Yes. But when God comes down and said, this is what you're here for. Right here. Revelations 10, 7. This is your commission. I believe he knew, Sister Jeannie, Malachi 4 was part of his commission. But see, I believe God had to reveal to him that Revelations 10, 1 through 7 was his commission. Amen? Because, he's, you know, in, in Malachi 4, it doesn't say that the seventh angel it's to turn the heart. It just says Elijah will come and turn the hearts. It doesn't say this. It doesn't identify him. But when you get over here in Revelation 10, 1 through 7, it says what? The seventh angel begins to sound his message. Right. The mystery of God will be finished. That's, That's right. the part that he had right there. Right. That's why he said they had to do two things. One, what? Turn the hearts of the, of the uh, children to the fathers. Right. And two, reveal the mysteries. According to Revelation 10, 7, I believe he puts in that quote, Revelation 10, 7, he's supposed to what? Break the mysteries to you and I so that we can get out of here. Right. And that's what we're doing now. The first seal is when it's open, when that first seal opens, correct me if I'm wrong, they all have to open. They can't, what I'm saying is they, God can't just open one seal and say, well, I ain't going to open the other one. Once that first seal's open, it's just like it's just like what? Because remember, in a scroll, you paid attention to that, right, Sister Jeannie? In a scroll, doesn't matter if it's a hundred pages; they all fold, they all roll up, and there's one seal on it, and it seals the whole thing. Once you pull that seal off, you roll it back, and there's the first page. Right. And you move that, and there's the second page. You don't have another seal. No. Remember, there's only one seal. Right. Right. Amen? Amen? The only one. Right. And you just sit there and turn the pages. Once that book was open, see, he closed the book, but once that book was open, it's open right. for you and I Amen. to take what we got and head toward a body chain. Glory. And that's what happens when this... Horse riders made known. It's heading us in a direction. Right. Amen. Because remember, we'll get into it next Sunday. We'll, get, we'll stop right here and get ready for communion. Let's stand. What happens is we take this right here and we get a revelation. Listen to me, that we've been worshiping Satan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. You either got God... Or the devil. That's right. Exactly right. Let's get down to brass tacks. Right. You either got God or the devil. You can't worship some little imp in between. No. They either God or the devil, and we're now realizing some of the things that we're doing. Right. Who are we giving worship to? Right. But see, that first seal, when it opens, that wild horse rider takes off. In other words, he's not going to hang around. He's not going to hang around because there's something coming underneath there. Right. You know what? When you expose somebody, they don't still hang around you, do they? No. When you expose somebody, they don't, you know, they don't, ah, you still my buddy. Now, now that you really know who I am, I, I'm the one that's been tormenting you for the rest, for, the, for your whole, for your almost 60 years now, Mark. <laughs> I just had to bring it in. 
But isn't that right? We live close to that man. I think Brother Brown said one time he gets his grimy fingers on us. Yeah. That's what he does. He holds on to us, Brother Danny, and the things we do. Yeah. But what does the seal do? It makes us realize, hey, because the first seal is the mystery of iniquity. Uh-huh. Iniquity is no one to do right. right. Listen, it's two things. It's right. doing wrong and knowing you shouldn't do wrong. Right. Or knowing you should do right, right. and don't do it. That's, right. That's, That's the biggie right there. I should have done. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful. Amen. Because you know what? When that, when that, anytime you have a separation, there's a little bit of tear there. There's a little yeah. bit of, there's a little bit of, you know, when you pull a muscle or something, you know, it's a little sore. But you know what? I want to see that rear end of that horse going in that direction. Yeah. Because if I see the rear end of that horse going in that direction and that man's on it, he's not here anymore. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, that what we said in a feeble way has helped us to see a little more light that when these we get into the symbols and the things that, that we see that you're doing in the end time, Lord, that they'll be more clear, that, that clarity will come to the message, that we'll truly see that what we were quoting there where we're going to come back into full fellowship. Not when we get to the millennium. Not when, That'll be easy. That'll be easy when we get to the future home to be in complete fellowship with you. But you want us to be in complete fellowship with you here. Here in this Satan's domain, he slipped into your domain and caused this thing to happen. And now, Lord, you're down here in Satan's Eden, bringing a bride out, telling us who we are, not who we're going to be, who we are and what we're doing here. Father, I ask that you just be with us, take care of us, be with us and affirm in the service. Lord, taking communion is a wonderful thing that we can do. And we, we practice that every month just to keep ourselves fresh, just to keep ourselves clean and, and shed all the junk that, that happens during the month. Because truly we're, we're, we're prone to, to Satan's using our memory and conscience, all those things, we're humans. But, Lord, you give us, you give us provision Thank you, Lord. to handle that. Lord, we give it now all to you, Father. Take care of us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's take communion. But think about that. Redemption, redemption, redemption. Right. We need our spirit back in connection with that soul. Right. And God will do it because he promised he'd do it. Right. He promised us he'd do it. Amen. Lord bless you. Amen. God bless you. You need this. Amen. Amen. You enjoy the message? Amen. 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 This redemption is to bring back what you fell from. Well, what did... Adam and Eve lose. They didn't lose their soul. Their soul had eternal life. That's what your prophet said. Blasphemous names. So it was the body that got lost. The world that got lost. It's going to be brought back. Amen and amen. What a wonderful day. What a time to be able to say we have heard the word. In our life's days, we've heard the word. The man of sin, he can't be revealed until the bride is taken out of the way. Then he can come forth. So then, let's get out of here. Let's go on into the communion then, and we go to John. And supper being ended, the devil having put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel where he, where he was, excuse me, uh, we have to go to Corinthians. I'm starting off backwards. I turned my scriptures and then turned it backwards. Let's go to Corinthians. Everybody wonder where I'm at. I'm in Corinthians. 
All right. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do shew the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. I like that. Yeah. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. I like that real good. That we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home. That you come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. So let's just take a few moments and just tarry one for the other. Pray one for the other. That the Lord would take care of everything. And I believe he's doing it. He's promised it. Why don't you pray sometimes believing that God is going to fulfill his word because he said he would. He's going to keep his promise. We don't have to worry about it. Do it. Let's just have a few moments of silent prayer.